Okay, I'm going to do a quick video on uh, Photoshop Elements so um, and how you how you can use it. Um, I'm going to go in, let me slow down a minute, go under File, go to Open, go to wherever your, your picture that you're wanting to color is located. Mine's in PC and Downloads. And then I'm going to look for the image I want to color. And I'm actually going to do this one right here. Okay. Okay, what I'm fixing to do, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to image because it's not, not really black and white. So I'm going to go up here. Oh, where's it at? It's a little bit different here, so. There it is. It's under enhance. And you're going to push convert to black and white. And this is what you want it to look like afterwards. You can actually adjust it some if you want, but this is over here it says select a style and it's set for portraits. And I like the way that looks, so I'm going to push OK. So this is kind of where I want it to be. Um, I'm also going to go up to enhance and I'm going to go to. I'm looking for, I, I saw levels, but I was wanting to manually adjust those. I didn't really want to do auto, but I guess in this one, you have to do auto. Okay, so we're going to do auto levels, and that's going to kind of to bring this out some. All right, now we're ready to color, because this is a pretty good image to begin with. I want to zoom in some. Snap to. Okay. A little more because I like to get it nice and big so you can see everything. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer. You're going to go down here where it says layers, you're going to click that, and then up here where this looks like a folded sheet of paper, click this, and that's going to create a new layer. All right, and then we're going to go to soft light because we want that layer on soft light. Actually, I think I'm going to zoom back out. Okay, and the reason we don't color on this this first image it kind of piles up on you, and it just it's not going to look right. So you want to you want to do it like this, and I'm going to kind of go down because I'm going to focus on her gown first. So um, okay, so I'm going to go to tool brush. I'm actually going to go down here. I want to switch these up. And I always color with a really bright pink. It's easy to see and it's easy to see if you miss spots. Okay. So um, I'm going to take my brush up some. And then I'm going to just start coloring in her dress. I'm not too worried about getting it over or anything because I can always come back and erase those. But I just want to get a dress. And I'm not going to get the lace because I want to I want to leave that. If I need to get some tight spaces, I can pull my brush down some down here. Okay. Okay, now that I got that colored, I don't actually want it that hot pink. That is not really a periodic color, but it does help me to see if I miss spaces. It's a little easier to view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push Control and U, and that's going to bring up a hue and saturation box. All right, and then what I can do is I can pick, say if I wanted it like a light blue. I can pick that blue. I can turn the saturation down and turn the lightness up a little bit and push OK. And that one's done. Dress is done. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to push this little piece of paper again, create another layer. I'm going to go back and turn it to soft white. And then I'm going to color my next item. So the next item I'm going to color, since I use the same color for everything, I don't have to change my color up. 
I'm going to go ahead and start coloring her skin tone. And I'm just going to go over this. Alright. I'm going to go up and do her face, her neck. You can see it back here. And this is kind of floppy. I'm just showing you basically how to do this with elements. Alright. So now that we got that, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to push Control U. And then I'm going to go, it's a little bit different on this one. I'm going to go about here and turn the saturation down. I can go up, I can go down, and you can even do a pink color. And you can do several layers on the skin tone to just get the, the exact color you want. But since I'm just doing a quick tutorial, I'm not going to do that. And once I've got it where I want, I'm going to push OK. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go up here where this little folded piece of paper is, create a new layer. Turn to soft light, and then I'm going to start coloring in her hair. And I don't really try to get all these little wispies because if you ever notice in the mirror, if you got those little hairs that kind of stand out, you can't really see the color tone of those real well. Now, when you get a bunch of them together, you can. But when they're just little wispies, you don't. So, we want to make sure we get the main parts of the hair. Maybe a little. Okay. So, I'm going to go push Control and U. And I'm going to go kind of down on this spectrum because this is where my blondes and my browns are going to be. And I'm kind of going to stick it in the middle. I'm going to turn the saturation down so it gives kind of an, a really natural feel. I can darken it to make it more brown. I can lighten it to bring it a little more blonde. And I like it somewhere in there. So I'm going to push OK. I'm going to create a new layer. Push soft light. And I'm going to zoom in because I'm going to work on her face a little bit. Take my brush size down. I'm going to do her lips. Okay. So now I got her lips. I'm going to push Control U. And I'm going to take this darkness down on that one to give it more of a natural feel. And I'm even going to take the, a little bit of saturation out. Push OK. Go up. Create a new layer. Do soft light. I'm going to actually take my brush back up because I'm going to do some blush. And I, it's, I find it easiest if you make the brush about the size of the apple of the cheek. It just puts it in the right place for you. This one I'll have to take down a little bit because of that hair. Like that. I'm going to push Control U. I'm kind of going to go up a little bit. Down with my saturation. And I'm actually going to go down into the lighter shades because we don't want her to look like she's got real heavy blush on since she's a kid. And I'm going to get right where I think it's about right. I'm going to push OK. That's still a little bit dark. Since it's still a little bit dark, what I can do is on this layer here, since it's her cheek color and I want to lighten it a little bit, I can go up here to where it says opacity. It says 100%. I can go and I'm going to adjust the slider down just a tad. And that's going to make it a little more opaque. Okay. I'm satisfied with that layer, so I'm going to go to the next one. So we're going to push a new layer. Go to soft light. I'm going to color her flowers. So I'm going to take my brush tool down some. Oh, oh that's color. Okay. Just real light. It's hard for me to see. And I'm just going to go and get all these little petals.
And when I get all the little petals colored, I'm gonna push Control U. I'm gonna go back up here to my yellower scale. And I'm actually gonna take this darkness down a little bit. And the saturation up a little bit. I'm gonna push OK. And I don't like how it's like in between the flowers you can see the color, so I'm gonna go to the eraser. And I'm gonna take my size down some. And I'm gonna just clean this area up some. So there's not all that overflow. And when I get done, I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. I'm going to push soft light again. I use soft light on everything. So it, it makes it a lot easier, and especially with me using the same color, it makes it just really quick. Um, let me color these. push control U. I'm going to take that down some. and I'm even going to take the saturation down some because you're not really going to see that real well. I'm going to push OK. And now I want to zoom out and kind of I'm going to fit it on the screen because I want to kind of see. So we've got all the picture colored except the background. So we want to create a new layer. Oh. I don't, yeah, I did it. Okay. Wait a minute. No, I didn't. Okay. Create a new layer. And we're going to go to soft white. And I'm going to need a bigger brush on this one. Because I'm going to be doing the background. And I don't want it to take all that. So I'm going to go actually up pretty high. And I'm just going to start painting this in. I'm not really worried about the little wispies and of her hair and the reason is is because if she's sitting in front of a background and they're little fine pieces of hair you're going to be able to see that background anyways so it's not it's not as big of a deal as you would think you can try to be precise and and on some you can you, you know if they're oh, the hair's a lot more bunched or it's a darker color you may see it a little better. I'm going to get in between that flower because I definitely want to be able to see that. Okay, so when we get this all colored, we're going to follow the same suit. We're going to push Control and the letter U. Okay, and then we're going to, I can flip through these and see what color I like. I could actually do a pink and or a pinkish purple, lighten it up some. And that actually turned out pretty good. So I'm going to push Apply. And then when I get done, um, what I like to do is I click the background, I right click it, and I push flatten image. And so now it's all one, one layer. Make sure you've got everything adjusted before you do this. And then I go up to select all, filter. And there's one under the blur, and it's called um, smart blur. And I use this quite quite regularly and I don't blur it all that high I really I want to keep those features and I, I blur it maybe I would probably blur this one to about a five and I would blur that and then I'm gonna come back and push filter mm -hmm. where's the other one I do not see it on uh, <laughs> On Photoshop, there's one that says sharpen, and I usually go back and sharpen edges. But I am having a hard time finding that on this one. Let me see if it's under enhance. Uh, there's one that says auto sharpen. That should work pretty well. I don't like the way it looks. And do adjust sharpness. Mm, I don't see it and it just may not be a filter in this one but that's the one I like personally so since that's the case I'm going to undo the smart blur and I could leave it like that but I just like I'm gonna take that smart blur down some since I can't sharpen that so I'm actually gonna take it down to maybe a two one 1.7 two and I like the way that the overall look is of that so I'm going to save it, save as, 
okay and then I will take it I have a folder that I keep on my desktop called colors and I would save it in here and I'm gonna make sure it's saved as a JPEG and then I'm gonna push OK and that'd be saved and that's how you color a photo with elements